I'm going to use ER70 for the first pass and then a different rod for the second pass. This is 4130 tubing, 0.12 wall thickness, 2 inch diameter. I'll be doing kind of a burn down root pass with a small diameter rod and then coming back over it with a second pass. Now this is just a practice cluster joint 4130 kit, but it's very representative of a lot of stuff that I've done in a side hustle job. And a fixture plate like this, something to get things at a, at a square 90 easily and to hold things and then you can spin it around on your main work surface is, is one of the handiest things I've ever used. It'll let you clamp something at a true 90 degrees in just a few seconds. I'm going ahead and sharpen it up a couple of 2% lanthanated 332 diameter electrodes. And then I'm only using a number 6 cup to tack weld with just to save a little gas because I'm getting low and it's the weekend. 12 CFH will do just a fine job with that number 6 cup, especially since I'm going to prop the cup and then just hit a really small tack really quick. I'm trying out a new auto darkening welding helmet. If you see it on my store soon, that means it passed the test. So far, so good. I really like it. I use a 2.5 cheater lens. This, this helmet lets me just slip one right in there. I'm trying to make my tacks pretty small so that they're not obvious when I go back over them. But since I'll be doing two passes, that shouldn't be a big deal. And I'm getting quite a few tacks. I tack every inch and a half or so, probably. I'm not really measuring it. I'm just, I just don't want it to walk around on me while I weld these first two out. Or otherwise, the rest of them won't fit properly. Nice small tacks. Should be pretty easy to burn right through those, melt them in. Now I'm going to switch to this Jazzy 10 ceramic cup, one of my very favorite cups. When you add this double diffuser here in addition to the diffuser that's in the gas lens itself, you really got something there. You can go with a really long stick out and it only requires about 20 CFH, which is really what I use on a number 8 cup typically. So it's one of my favorites. Perfect cup for a job like this. I'm using 045 diameter ER70S2 for the first pass here. Occasionally I jumped up to 1 16th. For, for joints that had a small gap in them. This is kind of like a lap joint and the most important thing, one of the most important things on a lap joint is arc length. This is, a, this is way too long of an arc length, too much torch angle, and I'm um, coming in and out of the argon with that feather rod. I tighten it up a little bit here, but this is more like what you would see with gas welding with an oxyacetylene torch. You're not getting the benefit of TIG welding when you hold a long arc. It even looks kind of like a gas weld, all dull and gray and lumpy. So it's all, everything you've seen so far here is 100 amps on this lap joint. And all I do is just tighten that arc length up, still at 100 amps, and everything gets way better. Okay, let's get back to the 4130 chromoly tubes now. Okay, I'm just going to get a, a single pass on this first joint here because this is just practice. I know if this was uh, an actual chassis I was welding, it might be a requirement to get a full two passes on this before I put the other rest of the cluster pieces on there that are coped. I can tell my argon tank is getting a little low. I have owner's bottles, typically the 125 cubic feet, and I'm not really sure they vacuum them out or they just top them off or whatever, but I've noticed when they get down pretty low, you can notice a difference in the argon coverage. This is a stainless joint I did a while back, and it's very much just like what I'm doing here on the chromoly, except that I try to get going a little quicker on stainless and move out, but I'm not really doing anything much different. It requires a little bit lower amperage on stainless than for carbon steel and chromoly, but same technique where you try to twist your wrist and reposition and maintain some kind of decent torch angle. Still using the Jazzy 10 cup on here though, so you can see how well it's working. Now if you wanted to get practice out of position, you can certainly position it up over your head or some kind of hard position just like I did this joint here. This is actually pretty easy. Nothing's in my way or anything. And when you're welding a chassis, everything's in your way, at least on certain joints. But you got to start somewhere. So I'm going to weld this just thing out flat on the fixture plate. Mad respect to all those guys that contort their bodies and, and get inside and weld and still make the welds look awesome. So I'm tacking it all out. Went back to the number six cup to save a little argon, keeping it clamped down good and flat. I've been trying out this little TIG torch holder here recently. Kind of a handy place to hang your torch, and the cool thing about it gives you a little place to sort of give yourself a little slack without it hanging on your table legs and stuff. So I found it pretty handy. Also, this little TIG part organizer's got some magnetic bases on it. 
keep a little good assortment of cups and collet bodies and things like that. I'm going back to the Jazzy 10 ceramic cup now. I'm going to bump my argon up to about 20 CFH and I'll keep on going. Again, with a 045, actually it looks like I may have a 1 16th in my hand here. But yeah, like I said, wherever there's a slight gap, if I didn't get my fit up just right, I'll just use a 1 16th rod and I use a 045 for where it's appropriate. I'm really just trying to get really good penetration right down into the root of the joint here. I'll get some reinforcement filler metal in there with the second pass. So on these first passes, I'm not doing anything crazy with the foot pedal. I'm not pumping the foot pedal or anything. It's just a straight current. And I'm about 120 amps right here. When I come up on the tack, I probably skip a dip just to uh, compensate. It might make a ripple look funny or something, but this is the first pass and I'm more concerned with having, you know, not having a bump there. On a cluster joint like I'm welding today, sometimes you have to use a really long stick out. You get, you get these really tight angles and you need a long stick out. And I'll bump my argon up a little bit, up an extra five or so, and I can extend the electrode at easily three quarters of an inch with this one. I have done it more than an inch even and, and still get good gas coverage on a joint like that. There is a lot of welding on this practice kit, a lot of inches of weld. And so I'm showing lots of angles, lots of different joints, but I won't show every single one of them. They're just kind of too much and they all start to look the same after a while. But the way cope tube joints work is, you know, there's, there's, there's parts of it that kind of you're welding down in a V, parts of it are kind of like a lap joint, and you're constantly having to reposition your wrist in order to maintain a favorable torch angle. We'll show one or two more here, and then we'll go on to the second pass. You see my torch angle here is just almost straight in. There are times when it's leaned back quite a bit. It's very forgiving as long as you hold a tight arc. And a tight arc to me is roughly the diameter of the electrode or a little bit less. Depending on your skill level, depending if you shake a lot and things like that. If you hold too tight of an arc, you'll be cleaning electrodes all the time. If you hold too long an arc, you'll get that scenario that I showed earlier with the rod blobbing up and blobbing into the puddle. I'm going to wire brush those now and then let it cool for a good little while before I come across with the second pass. I set the machine now an additional 20 amps up to 140 amps max and I'm just kind of stomping the pedal full pedal and then backing off to probably maybe 110 amps or something like that. I wasn't watching the machine so I'm not really sure backing off just to give myself a little time to turn my wrist if I need to and to feed rod. I really admire the work that, that Joel does, that Frank Flerquin does, Eli Latin, and they all seem to pump the pedal like this. They, they make it look way better than this, but uh, you know, there's a lot of benefit to it, and I can see why it's done for chromoly cluster joints like this, because when you manually pump the pedal, you can adjust on the fly. That pulse doesn't come when you're not ready for it get hung up for a second and have to feed rod or turn your wrist a little bit you can you can adjust now this is a special rod here you notice it's got a little bit different look than the ER70 some trophy truck builders you know for for cosmetic purposes mainly for show cars and whatnot will uh, use a, a super missile weld or a ER312 stainless for the second pass I'm not using either one of those. This is uh, something I happen to have a lot of, and I'll tell you what it is at the very end. See if you can guess. We're nearing the end here, okay? Only uh, a minute or so left, so there's so many welds on here to show, and I got some pretty good arc shots. I thought, well, I might as well show what I got instead of just trying to make it as short as possible. So it's around, this video's around the 11 minute mark. And I'm speeding up portions of it and leaving portions of it out because it kind of, like I said, it all looks the same after a while. I need to do one last nice long run. I'm going to try to make it kind of without stopping. And of course, my TIG finger there is kind of a heat pad. It's going to let me do that without my hand just smoking before I get finished. I'm going to try to make this look good, make it look somewhere close to the sample that Joel gave me. I got really lucky almost 30 years ago and was able to buy a whole bunch of Hastelloy W 1 16th filler for basically scrap price. 
So I bought as much of it as I could, and that's why I'm using it here. It's really expensive. It's probably not the appropriate rod here, but I've just got curious as how it would look on 4130 chromoly.